Nobody really, these people that you're worried about don't even care. These people that makes you feel so much shame don't even care. It's time to let go of friendships that no longer serve you. It's time to let go of friendships that don't uplift you. It's time to let go of friendships that's just one-sided. As difficult as that might sound, it's time to let it go. We to how journaling really helped me heal. Hey, my sisters, you guys, subhanAllah, it's just so amazing when you just write it down, get it out of your mind and put it on a piece of paper, how it really makes a difference. But with all that being said, always remember, with the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest. That's one thing didn't work for you. It just wasn't for you. Doesn't mean that you're not capable. Doesn't mean that you can't achieve your goals. You can absolutely do it. SubhanAllah, you know when we let go of things that no longer serve us, right? We feel so much lighter. We, we can focus more. We feel so much at ease. And also, in terms of the digital decluttering, we have to get rid of pictures, those screenshots that we see something, you know, somebody says something or like a motivational quote, we screenshot it. Did you did you go back on your phone and read it again? Did you? Nine times out of ten, no. It's just sitting there. Why? Taking up space. Delete it. Clear up your phone. This is what I said. sisters. How are you all doing? I hope you all are well and good. My name is Fatiba G. If you're new here, you're so welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here, sis. And thank you for being patient with me because I've been so inconsistent in posting. But I'm trying my best to start posting more regularly, inshallah. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well and good. And you guys have been looking after yourselves and growing and becoming the best versions of yourself, inshallah. Allah I know I disappeared doing these sit down videos because you know once upon a time like when I first started a YouTube channel I really enjoyed editing but now editing is not so fun you know but alhamdulillah anyway um I'm gonna try to be as consistent as possible alhamdulillah anyways I'm good alhamdulillah my children are all right alhamdulillah just trying to you know just take it one step at a time alhamdulillah how have you guys been doing how is your health how is your dean how is motherhood how is wifehood how is single parenthood you know how is everything i hope everything is good and i would like to know how you're really doing so please comment down below and let me know how you've been keeping up may allah look after all of us i know life is not easy life just goes on we just have to take it one step at a time every single day so keep strong sister you know you've got this you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking after us all the time so in today's video, I want to talk about something that's had a really, really big impact in my life and that's decluttering. And when I say decluttering, I don't mean like decluttering our homes and things like that, but I mean like decluttering our body, our soul, our mind and everything in between. Like subhanAllah, you know when we let go of things that no longer serve us, right? We feel so much lighter, we, we can focus more, we feel so much at ease and we feel at peace. So I'm directly talking to you guys. So if you've been feeling overwhelmed lately by all the physical clutter, all the emotional baggage or the digital overload, this video is for you. So let's get started. The first thing that I believe that we need to declutter is our mind. When our mind is cluttered, we have all these things on our mind. We're not able to focus properly and every single thing that we do becomes 10 times much harder. So I've listed some things that I believe that when we work on these things, inshallah, slowly, slowly, we can start feeling a little bit more calm, a little bit more peace. And inshallah, things won't be so difficult. So first of all, you need to let go of the negative self-talk. SubhanAllah. The self-talk that tells you you're not good enough, that you're not capable, that you're weak, etc, etc. You need to let that go. You're more than that. Like, I, I understand that a lot of us who have been through a lot of trauma and experienced certain things in our life, sometimes we tend to believe what people have told us. But I just want you to know, it's all lies. Let it go, inshallah, let it go. You are enough, you're not weak, you're capable and you are enough. So that negative self-talk, you need to eradicate it. That's the first thing I believe we need to do to clear our mind, to declutter our mind. Let go of that negative self-talk. And the other thing I feel like we need to let go is the unnecessary 
distractions especially when it comes to social media there are tons and tons and tons of content every single day on social media and we can get caught up with that limit the time that you spend on social media because it can really cloud our mind like most of the videos that we watch by the end of it we don't even remember half of the things that we watch and we've gone through hundreds of videos we have to limit our time otherwise it really clouds our mind and nine times out of ten especially like on tiktok or instagram reels and things like that they they don't really necessarily benefit us so limit your time on these apps and just clear your mind the other thing that i feel like we need to declutter is the limiting beliefs like believing that you can't do it believe believing that you can't achieve your goals sis you can do it let go of that belief that you're not capable like forget all the things that you were told whether it was when you was a child teenager adult whatever let them go they're not true let those beliefs go and start believing in yourself and understand that you are actually capable you can achieve your goals and you can do what you want to do as long as you put your mind to it as long as of course it's halal you know you know you can definitely achieve those goals so let go of those limiting beliefs like for me for example for many 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 years i just felt like i couldn't do it i just felt like i can't achieve what i want to achieve because i'm not an academic like i'm not an academic okay i went to university waste of time waste of money all of that but you know when i finally came out of university i didn't get the grades that i needed because i wanted to be newsflash i wanted to be a psychologist i wanted to be a clinical psychologist and at the time you had to get a certain grade to be part of the i'm sure it's still the same now to be part of the um british psychology society to basically be able to practice psychology and i didn't get the grades to be part of that society and i remember during that time i felt so low i'm not gonna lie to this day i'm kind of like dealing with that trauma even though of course i don't want to be a psychologist anymore alhamdulillah but at that time i felt it so deeply like i'm not capable you know so i've had to like literally let that go and be like you know what i am capable maybe being a maybe becoming a psychologist was just not for me it wasn't part of my qadr you know and i've had to slowly slowly let it go even till now i need to fully let it go and that's why i'm on this decluttering journey myself you know so just know that if something didn't work for you it just wasn't for you doesn't mean that you're not capable doesn't mean that you can't achieve your goals you can absolutely do it maybe you can put that aside for now and then focus on things that you know you're actually good at things that are actually going to make you achieve your goals and then when you feel more confident inshallah then bi'idnillah you can come back to pursue whatever you want to pursue but don't try to pursue one thing when you can clearly see that it's not working out it's probably not for you it's probably not written for you you know so yeah alhamdulillah that happened to me and it's like yeah alhamdulillah now i'm so grateful that yeah i didn't practice psychology like the way i wanted to practice it another thing that i think we need to let go to basically help us declutter our mind is to let go of toxic relationships i will never ever tell a sister to leave their marriage i will never do it okay it's never my place to do that i think that's a decision that anyone ha that the people who are involved has to make themselves nobody should intervene you know however i personally believe that if some some if a relationship doesn't serve you you know it doesn't make you grow it doesn't help you with your dean and all of that etc etc i think it's time to start thinking of you know, removing yourself in such relationship with, whether it's a marriage or a friendship if it's not bringing you peace it's time to slowly slowly distance yourself another thing that's very very big to me personally is basically letting go past issues is the past for a reason let it go sis let it go i know it can be so so hard it was so hard for me subhanallah like when everything was just you know tumbling down i didn't know what to do but alhamdulillah i had been to therapy in the past so i just said to myself i need therapy i need therapy so i did i went to therapy with the nhs and even with the nhs it was okay but i felt like i couldn't express myself how i really wanted to just in case i said the wrong thing i'm not gonna lie at the time i was worried that oh they probably might want to take my children away from me so i can't i couldn't really be expressive as i wanted to so you know what i did they're not sponsoring this video in any way whatsoever 
I literally found a therapist on BetterHelp way before people start you know like now you see every single ad you see better help better help like it wasn't as popular then as like it is now kind of thing i found myself a therapist on better help and she was so good like literally she was so amazing i know they say you shouldn't be you shouldn't have like multiple therapists at once but with me i had to because with the therapist from better help I basically was able to really express myself, really be myself and not worry about her having to call social. That's what I thought at the time. Anyway, social services on me because my mind was not in the right place and everything. And you know what I also did? I also, on top of that, I got myself two Islamic therapists because one thing about me when I'm in the therapy, in the therapy room, right? One thing that's always playing in my head is in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest? So I'm here because my heart is not at ease. But I always constantly reminded myself that I just need to get closer to Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest? So I always remembered that. So I wanted to also link my healing journey with somebody who has studied psychology and also knows the deen. I can link it together. So that was very, very helpful for me. So if you can invest in that, I think it's a really, really beautiful to, beautiful thing to do to let go of your past issues. Another thing, I keep saying it and I'm going to say it and I'm going to say it and I'm going to say it. <laughs> keep journaling. You have to journal. Like even if you choose not to keep your journal, like for me, I'm a bit of a... I'm different. I don't want to call myself a weirdo. But I have two different types of journals. I have a journal that I, I always have the intention to burn, which is like my negative thoughts journal. I feel like I don't want to keep them. I don't want to keep... I don't want to keep that vibe. I don't want to keep that energy. So I have my negative thoughts journal where I would write down all the negative things, all the bad things with the intention to rip it up or burn it, okay? And I have my normal journal, which is just life and just daily things and things that i'm grateful for and you know little things that are not so traumatic i put in that of a journal you know kind of thing you can journal anyhow you like you can put everything in one journal the good the bad the ugly every single thing but just make sure you journal from the beginning that's one thing i'll talk about i don't want to get into it too much but i'll definitely get into how journaling really helped me heal hey my sisters you guys subhanallah it's just so amazing when you just write it down get it out of your mind and put it on a piece of paper how it really makes a difference but with all that being said always remember with the remembrance of allah do hearts find rest that's what got me through even though i had all these different therapists even though i invested all this money i used to make a list of how much i was spending i can't even tell you guys subhanallah you know i invested in my growth in my healing you know, and I would advise you to do the same, you know, because a lot of us have su suffered from some sort of trauma, some sort of things that basically tapped our brains one way or the other. So I cannot emphasize enough journal. And if you cannot afford private therapy, then you just have to wait on the waiting list for the NHS. It's a very long list, but you just have to wait. And it's so worth it, you know. Now, we all know that when we clear our minds, we can live more intentionally, inshallah, more peacefully. You can focus more. So this is something I really, really want you sisters to work on. Declutter your mind as much as you possibly can. Take it one step at a time and inshallah, you're going to get there, inshallah. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about is basically looking after our body, decluttering things that don't serve us you know decluttering junk food cutting down sugar cutting down caffeine i know this is hard even for me yes it is especially my cup of coffee in the morning i haven't had coffee for a long time though about three weeks now so some of these things is so important to declutter like you see me i'm a foodie okay call me fatima g the foodie i love food junk food we all know we know junk food tastes good maybe we can limit that we need to declutter that a bit limit it because it's not good for our health you know the thing as well when it comes to our body we need to prioritize sleep like this is advice to me most importantly 
because while I've been working really, really good with my sleep, I've been going to bed early, waking up early, which has been really good. But there are some days that I'm going to bed late. Like right now, it's quite late. You know, it's 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 different because I want to do this video for you guys. The kids are sleeping. I should be sleeping with them. But, you know, I want to do this video. It's much better when they're asleep. I can do this video. I can focus on it kind of thing, you know. But we need to really prioritize our sleep. Like, you know, when you go to bed early and you wake up early, you feel so refreshed. And because I've been going to bed early, waking up for Tahajud hasn't been, a, like, it hasn't been difficult for me, you know? SubhanAllah. But when I go to bed late, it's a struggle, SubhanAllah. So we need to really prioritize our sleep and basically declutter the fact that we go to bed late, we do like we've in the world of social media and everything just sit there just be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling time goes so quickly and also i also think that to really look after our body water fast is the way literally i did um a water fast about a couple of months ago now i just decided to fast for seven days it was quite challenging but trust me, by the end of it, I felt so good, alhamdulillah. So look after our body. Like, go for walks. I, I'm a walk person. I like to walk. I don't exercise. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I exercise. I work out. I have all of these workout things that I have bought from TikTok shop. Because I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing the step. I'm going to be skipping. And then, you know, that you know during that time when that hula hoop thing that was going viral, I bought that. Have I used it even once? No that's something i'm working on to exercise a little bit more as well but if you're good at exercising then sis take that up start exercising as much as you can however what i'm really good at is walking i'll be walking i don't mind i can walk a long time and alhamdulillah my children as well they love walking so when i when we do go for walks i don't take them to like boring places we go for like nature walks and stuff like that so that they can explore they can play they can find sticks and start playing with it and all of that so it's fun for them as well so walking 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 let's aim to get that ten thousand steps a day i'm on the step up app which has been really great like competing with other sisters and stuff to see how many steps we get daily i always aim to be um like the top three you know ideally i would love to be first but i just have to be realistic with myself so whether i'm first second or third i don't want to be below that so i try my best to make sure that i'm you know the top three basically so walk sisters declutter that weight get rid of it all slowly slowly if if you're trying to lose weight of course you know but if you're content with your body weight i feel like you still need to walk just to be just to clear your mind just to be fresh fresh air being outside is just so fun isn't it subhanallah now another aspect of our life that i believe we have to declutter is our soul yes 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 especially as muslims you know our soul can just want to do whatever it wants to do sometimes it leads us astray it makes us sin and do all of that we have to really try our best to control our soul when our soul is telling us to do haram we have to control it we have to find a way to control it i can't give you reasons how you can control your soul that's probably something you need to go look at because i'm not a student of knowledge i'm learning the deed myself but for me personally what i do when my soul just wants me to do stupidness is i just say multiple 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 times or sometimes what really helps me is i just get the quran and start reading and that kind of like you know diverts my mind and my soul wanting to do craziness and stuff because i got a lot of fitting on myself like for example yeah I don't want to expose my sins in any way whatsoever. Where I come from, yeah, music is a fitna. Music is a fitna. And while the Fatima now wants to... I, I, don't, I haven't listened to music for years, but there's still that part of me that... Uh, yeah, let's leave it there, you know? So sometimes to tame my soul, to be like, no, nah, we can't be doing this, you know? I just read the Quran and stuff like that or I distract myself with something else. So we really need to be able to tame our soul. We have to find a way to be able to tame our soul as Muslims. Another thing that we need to do for our soul is to let go of that grudge and let go of that resentment, sis. Because sister, you're only hurting yourself. I was only hurting myself. I'm sitting here bitter and angry and upset. And the other person who did whatever they did to me is living their best life. Well, living their life, you know. 
and I'm here suffering. Let it go because it only hurts us. It really hurts our soul. Like you can feel it. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's not just our body that feels the sensation of, of, of holding to grudge and resentment. Your soul feels it, you know, subhanAllah. So let it go. Let it go. I know it's easier said than done, but find something, find a practice that you need to do to let it go. For me, what it was, I just kept saying it to myself. I forgive this person. I let go of this grudge. I let go of this resentment. It doesn't serve me. I don't want to hold on to it. The other person don't even care. The other person is not even bothered. And I'm here bothered. I'm here hurting. So I let it go. It doesn't serve me. I forgive the person even if they haven't asked for forgiveness. And that's what helps me. Also, we need to learn to get rid of guilt and shame. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We just have to learn to forgive ourselves. When my marriage fell apart, I felt so much guilt because for me, the time, the guilt was, I never, ever wanted my children to grow up in a single parenthood, parent household. How could I make such a big mistake? How could I choose somebody like this? But I felt so much guilt. Like, why did I make such a mis big mistake? I'm not going to lie, there were no red flags. There were no red flags. Looking back, there was probably like one red flag, but it's not... <clears throat> Yeah, but we'll talk about that in another video. <laughs> you know, I have felt so much guilt, you know, and I used to cry about it. But then guess what? I made a mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote it down that I was going to get married to this person. He wrote it down that I was going to, you know, have three children by this person. It is what it is. And that's what really helped me that, you know what? Allah wrote this down. That's what helped me to get rid of that guilt and also i felt shame i felt so much shame you see where i'm from women don't like to talk about divorce women would rather stay in a toxic marriage for the rest of their life that man is not serving them that man is not paying bills that man probably don't even sleep in the same room as them they would rather that than get divorced so when i was getting divorced especially me in my situation so many people were clapping for fatima to get divorced i don't know why i don't know why i don't know why all the blood these people are just bad-hearted disgusting heart because how could you sit there and wait for somebody else's child to get divorced i've got evidences i've got proofs that these people were doing such you know so i felt so much shame like no nah, this don't happen in my community people don't get divorced people will ride it out till the end literally you know and I felt so much shame. And also, I just felt like, oh, I've proven these people right. These people were clapping for me to get divorced. And here we are. And that shame was what made me, one, I didn't really talk about it with a lot of people. I didn't talk about it with my family till my divorce and like, till everything was finalized. And also, I, I didn't think I'd be sitting here today talking about a divorce. Like, I was just so ashamed. And also, the other reason why I really, like, I also stayed a bit longer because for like time I was trying to work on the marriage it was because of that shame that I felt because of other people. Let it go. Let it go. You know, like most of these people don't even care about you. I had to sit down and think to myself, wait a minute. How many of these people have actually called to check on me? Let's say, let's say the last two, okay, you know what? Two years is a lot. Let's say the last six months. How many of these aunties, these so-called people, these so-called masjid aunties have actually reached out to me and be like, how are you Fatima? How are the kids? How are you coping? And all of them know that obviously like my mom is not here to really like be hands-on helping me, you know? But however, they knew that my, my Dean mom, I called her my Dean mom was the only one helping me, but I'm not blood related to her. And I had to sit down and be like, these people don't even care about me, man. And here I am. I've been suffering for the past year because my married, my, my, the divorce was, uh, it took a while. I've been suffering for the past year and nobody has shown up. That's what let me get rid of that. Because I'm like, you lot don't even care. These people don't care. Why am I worried about what these people think? Why am I worried? Why am I worried? You know? And that helped me. And now here I am talking to you guys talking about divorce freely and i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna say i'm a proud single mom because being a single parent is hard but trust me sitting here boldly and talking to you guys that i'm divorced and i'm a single parent it took a very long time to gain that 
confidence, you know, because it was hard. But now I talk about it. I'm not worried about none of these people, none of them. And that's what I want every single one of you guys to, to learn that let it go. Put it in the trash can, put it in the bin. Nobody really, these people that you're worried about don't even care. These people that makes you feel so much shame don't even care. This person that's making you feel so much guilt don't even care. Just let it go. And also, we have to let go the fact that a lot of us compare our lives to other people. Understand that everybody's on their own journey. Everyone is on their own path. And also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written down absolutely everything. When this person's going to get married, when this person's going to have kids, what job this person has, and so on and so forth. We shouldn't compare ourselves to nobody because we are who we are and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us in this situation at this very time for a reason so don't compare yourself to people on social media because the thing is on social media a lot of the people what they really show us is less than 10 percent of their life what happens the 90 percent we don't really know so don't compare yourself to this person or this person has a lavish house this person has a nice house etc etc they have beautiful husband etc don't compare yourself to that you know you're on your own path, on your own journey, and everything is going to take time. So let go of the fact that, you know, you're so concerned about other people's lives when you should be working on your own self and how to improve your own self. And when you see something good on other people, just say Allahu Mubarak. Please just say Allahu Mubarak. Don't be sitting here envious of people's, people's lives when you only see like 3% of their life. 3% if that you know and most of it is behind closed doors don't compare yourself you know subhanallah be grateful and be appreciative of what you have and where you are in life and everyone is on their own path understand that also don't don't let the fear of failure stop you from trying let me tell you when i was going to do a youtube channel yeah it took me a year literally of contemplating of thinking oh what if i get a negative response uh what if these people see me what if that person see me oh my family's gonna get to know the real me like my family don't know me they don't know me they don't know me especially my dad my dad used to claim that this is what my dad used to say i know you more than yourself ah oh, that used to aggravate me that used to aggravate me because my dad does not know me you know so i used to think that oh these people are really gonna know me they're gonna know me because what you see is what you get i'm not gonna sit here and pretend to you guys because i don't like pretense i just like people being their normal natural self and stuff so i didn't want people to really get to know me i just wanted people I mean, to be honest, they're probably going to still remember that the good, the Fatima that they created in their head is probably going to live there forever. But because, because I didn't want people to really get to know me, it prevented me to start YouTube sooner than I should have kind of thing. And also I was like, oh, what if it doesn't work out? But then after I'm like, I don't even care. So what if it doesn't work out? It's a little thing that I want to do for myself. Maybe one person might be my subscriber, you know, maybe they will learn from me instead, you know? So just start, just do what you want to do. As long as it's halal, don't worry about failing because when you fail, it's an opportunity for you to learn, you know? It's an opportunity for you to grow. Okay, this didn't work out. Let me try something else then. You know what I mean? SubhanAllah. Now, now this is a big one that I think we all have to let go. And I'm directly speaking to the born Muslims like myself, you know? A lot of us, the Islam that we know, right? it's not really the authentic islam like we grew up in a household where yes we you know islam was at home but we didn't practice it as it should be we have to let that go now and start really seeking the authentic islam and learning what islam really is okay we have to let it go right for our own well-being for our own sake we can't be stuck into the 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 islam that we were taught by our parents and so on and so forth like me for example this I, I wasn't taught islam at home so in a way i'm a bit grateful for that you know but there's a lot of born muslim who are still kind of stuck with the islam that they know that they were taught when they were younger let it go and start seeking knowledge yourself start learning your deen start reading the quran properly and another thing as well for the born muslims sister have you ever sat down and read the Quran back to back? I'll wait. I'll wait. Because a lot of born Muslims 
have never sat there and read the Quran back to back, whether it's in Arabic or whether it's in um in English or whatever language that you speak, you know. Alhamdulillah, there are a few of born Muslims, Allahu Mubarak, who have actually memorized the Quran. But I'm speaking for like I think the, the West Africans, because I'm West African, so it's easier to relate. You like most of us didn't read the Quran back to back until we're probably like an adult. You know, most of us, most of us don't even know what we're reading when we read Surah Al-Fatiha. What does it mean? So let that go, this Islam that we were brought up with and start really learning the proper Islam, okay? Let the Islam we learned at home, put it in the trash and start learning the authentic Islam. These are my thoughts. Obviously, all of you guys will have your own different thoughts and opinions. And I would like to hear them in the comments below. Now this is a very hard one and i'm particularly speaking on it because it's it's happened to me while i didn't do this on purpose allah literally decluttered people out of my life you know i didn't do it on purpose because i love people i love friends i love to be around people you know but one thing i'll say is it's time to let go of friendships that no longer serve you it's time to let go of friendships that don't uplift you it's time to let go of friendships that's just one-sided as difficult as that might sound it's time to let it go we are in an age now we're old enough now to really want value in our friendships and likewise we give them value and if none of this is happening sister why are you friends of this person and the same thing goes with acquaintances why do you have so many acquaintances like we are in an age group in an age now where we need to be with people who are really going to help us grow dean wise dunya wise who are going to help us with our spiritual journey with our health and so on and so forth and also bring us amongst people who are going to help us elevate it's time for us to surround ourselves with people who are going to encourage us to become better who are going to uplift us and who are most importantly going to bring us positive energy it's just that simple there's no point of holding up to friendships because we feel guilty because we feel obliged to be friends with this person let it go sis and i'm talking to the, to the younger sisters as well i hope you lot are learning from me man i really want my younger sisters who watch me to really learn from me you can learn a lot from my experiences literally and a lot of people on youtube a lot of people like just easily calmly just you know share their life journeys and stuff like that take it from me I had so many friends, so many friends. I'm not going to lie to you. Right now, I would, I would say there's only like two sisters that I see as friends and everybody else is acquaintances, you know? And it was difficult. It was really, really difficult. So a lot of people that you're, you're growing up now with, like you're all together with now, maybe when you're in your 30s, they're not going to serve you anymore. They're not going to be the type of friends that you desire. And likewise, you might not be the type of friends that they desire, you know? Like in my case, there was a friend who... I was not the type of friend that she desired. But for many years, I was in that friendship. 15 years, you know? I was just being... It was just a one-sided friendship. But you know what happens? When you're not... When you're unhealed, when you don't know yourself, when you don't love yourself, you can put up with anything, even in friendships, not just in romantic relationships, but in friendships as well. Because can you imagine 15 years of being friends with this sister and not knowing nothing about her? And it's like, when Allah finally started healing me slowly slowly i started thinking and then allah started dropping people out of my life i didn't like it i didn't like it so what happened was i isolated myself because i just was not happy that i was seeing people for who they really are and the type of relationship and connection that i had with them i didn't like it, it was very difficult but as time went on and here i am today and i can proudly say i only have two people in my life who are considered friends right now everybody else is just people who i know <laughs> you know and i'm still looking for my best friend i think it's important for all of us to have best friend i never used to say best friend because i found it so cheesy but now i feel like i need that one sister who is my sister you know what i mean <laughs> so i just want you sisters to know that when you free up space you clear your mind it just clears your soul like everything just becomes so much easier and guess what allah will open doors for people to come in better people inshallah so don't worry about losing these friendships and all of that allah will definitely open the door for more people to come in inshallah to allah better people who are going to uplift you you're going to uplift them 
and you guys can just grow together bid nila to ella finally it goes without saying that we need to declutter our home i live in a very small house so the truth be told my house is cluttered a little bit a little bit a lot of bit a lot <laughs> you know so it's difficult when you live in a small space to basically be able to maintain everything but i've been on a decluttering journey hence why i'm bringing this video to you guys when we talk about decluttering as all of you guys know we always think about our home you know but like i've listed before we have to declutter our mind our body our soul and of course our home you know but trust me we have to start getting rid of things that we don't use you know get rid of them when our space is cluttered we can't focus like me if my if my space like i made myself this small space where i call it my office <laughs> you know if it's cluttered i can't work properly if the house is terrible i cannot work i can't even play with my children you know if the house is just in a terrible state so sometimes i have to take a time out and actually start intentionally getting rid of things just so that i can think clearer and also i can play with the kids you know subhanallah so we really need to start getting rid of things in our homes that for example we need to get rid of a lot of things we need to get rid of clothes that we don't wear no more clothes that we haven't worn for so long things that are broken things that we haven't used for such a long time things that we know is gonna be more used to other people put them in a bag send it to africa if you can or just take it to charity shop just declutter your home i've said to myself inshallah ta'ala me and my children will move away from this house soon when we're going 50 percent of our things is just going to charity i'm not taking them not that i want to become a minimalist because it's not in my blood to be minimal <laughs> it's not in my blood west africans are not minimal i mean i could try but i don't want to i don't desire to be a minimalist <laughs> side eye <laughs> sorry guys if you're a minimalist big up to you <laughs> you know but yeah 50 percent of our things is not coming like my children they have so much clothes do they need it no but it's just so nice that they have all of these things and i never have to worry here i am making excuse again i just need to get rid of my kids clothes at least half of their things need to go it's no need there's no need just get rid of things you know in the kitchen in the bathroom in the bedrooms in the living room just get rid of them like even if it's something that you think okay you know what i might use later no sis you're not gonna use it later you're not gonna use it for at least a year get rid of it okay if you really need it if you really needed it then you'll be using it but you don't use it often so just get rid of it you know i did say finally but i have to mention this right digital decluttering if you see my emails junk upon junk upon junk i have thousands of emails that i need to clear out i need to clear out my inbox clear out your inbox delete it make space on un unsubscribe to all of these things that you don't even use you don't even use anymore you don't even read some of the messages that are sent to you so just unsubscribe and just clear your inbox so go through your phone and delete acquaintances delete some acquaintances that you don't even talk to you know like for me <laughs> you guys will find out inshallah i went through my phone and i had like nearly 500 numbers of acquaintances that's what it is because like i mentioned i only have people two friends at the moment two sisters who are class as friends you know like why do i have all of these numbers why do i have 500 numbers on my phone of sisters who i barely talk to sisters who i don't even don't talk to anymore or sisters who if i message them it would be like one or two sentences and then the conversation is over no i don't want that anymore i don't need it it's just a waste of time i want to have a conversation with people who we're actually going to write in sentences and paragraphs and really understand what's really going on and actually have a conversation if i'm only having like two sentence conversation with you i don't want your number and like and frankly you should delete my number as well i know that sounds harsh that sounds harsh but i've reached a point in my life where i just don't have time to waste i don't i don't want to waste my time conversing with somebody who's going to give me one answer i don't want to do it so i'm deleting numbers i mean I, I've, i'm already on the journey but yeah i'm deleting numbers i want to get those numbers down to 150 <laughs> that's a lot coming from nearly 500 numbers to 150 we'll see anyway if i make 150 and also in terms of the digital decluttering we have to get rid of pictures those screenshots that we see something you know somebody says something or like a motivational quote we screenshot it did you did you go back on your phone and read it again did you 
Nine times out of ten, no. It's just sitting there. Why? Taking up space. Delete it. Clear up your phone. This is going to take a very long time for me to do because I've got thousands of images, thousands of videos. But I'm going to do it slowly, slowly until I get to where I'm actually content, inshallah. Now, just a brief explanation of why I did this video. I'm on a decluttering journey. I'm decluttering for Tima G okay and i'm gonna document as much of it as i possibly can and i'll have like a playlist decluttering for timmy jean i'm decluttering my home i'm decluttering my my phone i'm decluttering my weight because i'm not happy with my weight at all you know and unintentionally allah has decluttered my friends from me which i'm not gonna lie was very hard you know and all of that I'm decluttering a lot of aspects from my life and you guys are going to get to see that inshallah and i will document of it i will document it as much as possible there you have it sisters a complete declutter of mind body soul home and our phone i know there's other things that i haven't included so if there's anything you feel like we should work on and declutter please leave it leave them down below in the comments also sisters i want you guys to know decluttering is not just it's not just about getting rid of things it's really about really clearing our mind finding peace joy and calm in our life so if you found this video helpful please don't forget to give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe or share it with a sister or your mother or your auntie you know maybe they might benefit from it as well inshallah may allah make everything easier for us may allah bring peace in our heart may allah bring us joy and may allah allow us to get rid of all the things that are weighing us down and holding us from becoming our better selves and holding us down to find joy in life may allah make it easier for all of us i mean all right sisters until next time assalamu alaikum